In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure a modern React development environment. If you just want to start building, you can use the command npx create-react-app followed by your project name. I wanted to make this video for people who really wanted to understand how everything is connected. I'll try to make this quick because configuring your environment might be the most boring part of modern web development. I've included a steps.md file in the GitHub repository if you need to reference specific commands. Everything should work together with the most modern package versions, but if you run into errors or issues, you can use the version numbers for packages specified in the steps.md file. The only prerequisite for this video is to install node and npm. You can test to see if you have these installed by typing node-v and npm-v in the terminal, and you should see some version numbers pop up. Our first step will be to initialize our directory as an npm directory. You can do this by typing npm init-y. The dash y just tells npm to skip the initialization questions. We now have a package.json file in our root directory. You can think of package.json as a manifest for your project. If you want to share your project configuration with anyone, all they need is your package.json file and to run npm install, and npm will install everything specified in the package.json. Next, we are going to create an src directory in our project root. This will be where we keep the source code for our project. It's a good idea to form the habit of using version control, even if you're not planning to upload to GitHub. Initialize your root directory as a Git repository by typing git init while in the root of your project. Create a file called .gitignore and add the following strings of text to it. Everything in your gitignore will not be tracked by Git. You almost always want to have node modules in your gitignore. It's where npm installs packages, but as stated earlier, if anyone has your package.json, they can install the packages from that. So omitting node modules will reduce the project size considerably when trying to share it. .ds store is a file hidden in Mac OS directories. It's not necessary to share and would just clutter up our project root. .cache, dist, and .parcel cache are all files that will be created by our task runner parcel and don't need to be included. Finally, .env will ensure any environment variables we create won't accidentally get shared, and .vs code will remove any editor-specific settings we have enabled locally on our machine. Now that we have git set up, we can install some npm packages that will help with code formatting and linting. First, we will install prettier with the command npm install dash capital D prettier. If using VS Code, we can install the Prettier extension and add some extra settings to make Prettier format on save and run only in directories that we want it to. Search Prettier in the VS Code extension store and it should be the first option. Go to your VS Code settings and search Prettier config. Check the box that will require a config file for Prettier to run. While still in settings, search format on save and check the box that tells VS Code to use a file formatter when saving a file. Since we just told VS Code not to run Prettier unless there's a config file, let's create one really quick. Create a file named .prettierrc in your project root. Place an empty JavaScript object inside of it. That's it. Since we are just gonna be using the default Prettier settings, there's nothing to put in this file, but we will still need it because we just told VS Code that it needs a config file to run in the directory. Next, let's install ESLint and some ESLint plugins. ESLint plugin import enables ESLint to check your import statements for errors. ESLint plugin JSX A11Y will help you write accessible JSX for screen readers. And finally, ESLint plugin React gives ESLint the ability to understand React syntax. Now let's create a .eslintrc.json file in our root directory to connect everything we just installed. Inside the eslintrc file, add the following. Stins array is a list of rules that we would like to apply to our project. The order of this array matters, so be sure to write it exactly as I have it here. After the extends array, add a key called plugins. This array works hand in hand with the extends array and specifies what plugins we are going to use. Think of the plugins array as three restaurant menus and whatever we put in the extends array as us ordering certain dishes off of those menus for use in our project. Next, we are going to turn off some of the default roles for React projects. We won't be using React prop types and the new version of Babel doesn't require we import React in every file, so we will turn that off too. Next, we will need to give ESLint some information about our code and the environment it will be running in. 
I've included some comments in the code if anyone is more curious about what these settings are doing. Lastly, we will add a settings key that will tell ESLint to refer to our package.json for our version of React. After all of this, let's finally install React and React DOM. Run npm install react react DOM. Then let's install parcel, npm install dash d parcel. We're getting close to the end, I promise. Add a script to your package.json that points parcel to your project index file. Because we're using parcel, there's no need to configure Babel, but if you aren't using parcel, you can install Babel with npm install dash capital D at Babel slash core and at Babel preset dash react. Then add a .babelrc file to the root of your project with the following inside. Everything should be configured at this point. Let's create a Hello World React project to test everything. Inside the SRC directory, create three files, index.html, index.js, and app.js. Inside index.html, just create a div with the ID of root and a script tag pointing to index.js with the type module attribute. Inside index.js, import React DOM, import app, attach app to the root element by calling react-dom.render app document .get element by id root. Inside our app.js, we will create a function called app that returns a JSX H1 that says hello react. You'll notice here, I get an error when I try to run our parcel server with npn run dev. Because parcel configures Babel for us, it's just telling me that what's in the Babel RC is redundant. If you're not using parcel, having a Babel RC can be useful. If there aren't any typos and you go to localhost 1234, you should see your React app working. Congratulations, you've just configured a modern React development environment from scratch. Because we're using a live development server, the browser will automatically refresh whenever we save our project. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and for more content like this, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.